Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, I'm gonna be doing a awesome detail on this really, really crazy Pagani Waira. Oh yeah, it's got that single clutch kick. Yeah, um, might be a cop up there, but I'm not certain. This is basically like automotive art. It's just like engineered and designed from the ground up to be like a masterpiece of art that could be in a museum. At the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a full walk around of the car. Guys, you've, you've never seen anything like this. this. This car is totally bonkers. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna give you guys a cold start in a second, but just check out the key. This is the key to this crazy car. It looks like the Waira. How cool is that? Let's start the morning off right with a V12 Pagani cold start. So our fans of the channel uh, will know that we always start with wheels first and this car was no different. We're using PNS Brake Buster and we're spraying it on pretty heavy. And you'll notice I'm not doing any agitation or anything else special and you'll also notice the wheels are beating water like crazy. That's because the wheels were previously ceramic coated. The car has very, very low mileage and it has carbon ceramic uh, brakes. So they barely dust at all and this is never built up because the car was never driven very much. Uh, this also is very beneficial because we have gloss black wheels and gloss black wheels scratch very, very easily. Uh, obviously, you know, brake dust and stuff like that is very um, hard, so it's going to scratch stuff when you when you rub it into a gloss black wheel. So in this case, we kind of lucked out, and the wheels were just needing very, very uh, little work to get them very clean. You can see we were using hot water there as well, which also helps clean the wheels. It's winter time, so hot water is great. Hydro is going on in this shot, and hydro is like Gian wet coat, and basically that's just refreshing the ceramic. This is like a maintenance topper. So basically, because we knew they were ceramic coated and uh, this ceramic is probably a few years old now, even though the car doesn't have many miles on it, it was a good idea to refresh it. And as you can see, it really restores the water being uh, and really just topped it off and was a great maintenance thing to do uh, because our job was a little easier. So might as well keep them easy in the future. Let's take a quick look over the car. As you can see, it is pretty dirty. So the top half of the car is not too bad, but as you can see, the bottom half, very dirty. You see these fine bits of dust, almost like sand building up on the back of the car. Um, little Literal pieces of rocks in certain parts of the bottom uh, parts of the car that are literally uh, stuck on that you'll see as we go. And a lot of this fine dust on the bottom of the diffuser and stuff, and this stuff is like murder for swirl marks. It'll really, really be bad if we were just to jump in with a wash. So rinsing is very important. And as you will see in a minute, uh, it, rinsing really knocks about 95% of the stuff off. Now the front, the top, all of this stuff is very clean, and that's because this car was previously ceramic coated. So the rinse step is really important on this car because it's ceramic coated, because we have that protection on there that's going to make the rinse really, really effective. And you can see how hydrophobic everything is here. So when we're rinsing, we're really blowing like almost 100% of the dirt off the car because that hydrophobic property of the ceramic is doing what it's supposed to do, especially like on the bottom part of the car here. I mean, there was like full blown, like gravelly stuff stuck to the car there. But when we were done, look, I mean, it's beating water and it totally blew all that off, which helps so much. Same thing on the back of the car, we had that fine dust and that fine dust is really what builds up swirl marks really, really bad if we just jump in with a wash pad. So when we rinse, we rinse all of it away. So it really, really changes, uh, you know, the ability to minimize swirl marks when you do a really proper rinse. And the back of this car is basically all like black carbon fiber. So you would see swirl marks in black carbon fiber. And then like the bottom tray there, like there are full blown rocks down there. But look, you know, the pressure washer literally blew them off the car with maximum lubrication from having a lot of water going there versus me having to go in there with a wash pad or a brush and trying to dislodge it. That's like, you know, and that, would, that wouldn't matter if it was ceramic coated or not. That's just, you know, you gotta get rid of those things with a lot of water and a lot of lubrication. Um, but as you can see, just all of that stuff was uh, the best way to remove all of that heavy, heavy dirt before we got into foaming. We didn't wanna foam that stuff, right? We want it off, then we wanna foam clean paint. So that's what you see here. Now we're using a really nice thick foam on the car and because the car is ceramic coated, we're kind of doing ceramic maintenance here. So we actually sprayed uh, Gion Q2 foam onto the car, which is like, we've talked about that in other videos, but it's basically a really strong decon soap to really dig into that ceramic, into that paint and get all of the dirt and unclog it and really clean it really, really nicely. And all I did was spray it on and now I'm rinsing it back off. And as you can see, look how good that water beating is. Like that looks really, really, really good. So just by doing that foam and then rinse with Q2 foam, we really accomplished a lot uh, in terms of cleaning the paint and getting the dirt off. 
Now we're literally foaming the car a second time, even though I just rinsed that foam off. This is a second foam of the entire car. And now we're using uh, Gian Bay, which is just normal car soap. And this is intended uh, to be used as in, in this order. You, you can use Q2 foam if you want as your standalone wash product, but I don't really recommend that, and neither does Gian. It's not intended for that purpose. It's intended for a pre-wash foam and then rinse back off because it's like a heavy lifting product to, to really clean the coating out. Now we can go in and do um, the wash with Bathe and with our wash mitt. And because we did that rinse and because we did Q2 foam first, and now we're doing uh, you know our third step in this process of doing a wash with Bathe, with Bathe we are really minimizing the chance for additional swirl marks. Um, which is you know how you should basically be washing your car for any kind of heavy maintenance. But this is so important guys because the process we're going to do on this car is very different than on all the other cars. Whereas if I skip a step here and there and I scratch a car a little bit when I'm washing it, maybe to do it quickly, because I'm about to paint correct the entire car, that's not the end of the world. But if I, in this case of this car, I'm trying to make sure the car stays as perfect as possible because it was previously ceramic coated. We are going to polish this car, which we'll talk about in a minute, but we're not, we're gonna polish it differently. And because we're gonna polish it differently, um, it's really important that we wash the car correctly. It's really important that we don't put any additional marks into the car because we want to do everything we can to preserve the current ceramic coating on the car. So I don't want to put any accidental scratches in the car that I have to remove during my paint correction process versus if the car was like destroyed super horrible paint, well then it wouldn't really matter very much, would it? Um, so this decon process was really like a, a coating maintenance. It was more of a coating maintenance uh, wash than, than anything. And once again, you can look at this uh, th these shots here and really look at how good that water beating is. Um, you know, this is a fresh, fully, you know, done proper ceramic coating. This is not some kind of, uh, you know, cheater wax, like where someone put some Meguiar's wax on it before they sold the car. Like that, that is not what that looks like to me. That, that is real ceramic and good health. So we're going to do everything we can to try and keep it Every time uh, I get into this car, it kind of puts a smile on my face. I feel like I'm getting into the car from, you know, like the DeLorean from Back to the Future. It's got like that style door, and I tell you what, these, uh, these kinds of doors put a big smile on your face. <laughs> So to continue that theme of us being very careful, we're blow drying the car, which is what we would do anyways. Uh, but because the car is ceramic coated, it, look how easy it is to dry it. Literally the water flies right off, it's great. So this is helping us not swirl the car out any additional amount than the car already is. You know, slight spoiler alert, there are some swirls on the car, so it doesn't matter that much. Uh, but you know, when you can express caution, always do it. Now we're using Gian Quick Detailer here. Note that this is not Cure. This is also not Ceramic Detailer. I don't want to use any ceramic based products on this because I will be polishing it, which means it really does, it's a waste of product in this case. I just don't need to put that on there. So Quick Detailer is a great way to add lubrication as a drying aid. Uh, you'll see a second ago there, I used a yellow towel from Costco to wipe up some dirt, and then I'm using my good drying towel to dry. So when you, it's inevitable, you're gonna miss some spots or spots that this was impossible to miss because the door was shut. So. Uh, when there is heavy dirt in places, use a different towel, wipe the heavy dirt away, then use your drying towel that you want to keep clean and keep going. Otherwise, you're going to circulate through drying towels a lot when you get that inevitable little dirt. You can see I'm doing it again here on the door. Um, also, you know, this car is very complicated. So carbon fiber everywhere and lots of like door jams and little things we have to dry and clean. So water goes all over on a car like this. I can't just pull this car inside, leave it, and then paint correct it for a day and a half. I'll get water spots everywhere. So it's like really important that you pull the car in and that you look over everything and you dry everything before you start doing work. Like it cannot have water sitting anywhere or you'll get water spots everywhere to look bad. Uh, you'll see the very intricate way to open the hood and stuff. I'll show you more uh, close-ups on how some of this stuff works in uh, later later in the video because it's very cool how this like clamshell thing opens. Um, but yeah, 
like I said, water goes everywhere. So you can see there's all this stuff needs to be clean. Cause you can imagine if I had left all this and just started paint correcting the car for like a day and a half. And then I get to this in two days later, all of this is going to be dried. It's going to be a mess. So this is the right time to get in here and really start cleaning everything. Uh, and again, guys, carbon fiber everywhere on this car. So you know, you got to be careful because the way you're drying the underside of this is the same way you have to dry the door, the same amount of caution. Otherwise you scratch all this stuff and you would never want to have to polish all of this stuff. It would take six times the time to paint crack the inside under the hood than it would the outside of the car because it's so complicated. Um, so, you know, there's lots of caution going in here. You'll see me grabbing different towels to wipe up certain things and then going back in with my good towel because I'm really trying to avoid swirl marks and uh, just scratching things. And this car is like a piece of art. So we're really trying to just preserve everything we can. And uh, you can see we're popping the back here and uh, super cool how it opens up. The only thing I can compare this to uh, is like a Koenigsegg. It kind of looks the same way in the way it opens up, which is really cool. So same thing in the back. Fenders are obviously dirty. Every car with that's driven has dirty fenders, but lots of little water spots build up in the back and lots of things that we need to clean. Um, you know, not your typical car, right? All right, guys, so as you can see, the paint is pretty hydrophobic. Like we have a lot of hydrophobic water beading on there. It looks really good to me. That is not like cheater ceramic coating or anything. That looks like a real full-blown ceramic coating to me. So that's awesome. That's good news. Like that means that the previous owner really cared for the car. That, that was Keith Urban. So good job, Keith Urban. You, you took good care of your, uh, of your wire. So everything in the car looks really, really good. I'm gonna take you for a look around the car in terms of paint condition because there are some swirl marks on some places, which means we will polish the car, which means we will either A, remove the coating or two, we're gonna kind of hit the durability on it, but that's why we're gonna add our own coating back over it. Bottom line, new owner doesn't want swirl marks in his paint, so we're gonna fix that. So let me show you what the paint looks like and we're gonna talk uh, how I'm going to basically do a really uh, express um, like paint correction process, which is way different than the normal paint correction process I would do like for example on the P1 or the Senna. That was a totally different process because those cars did not have ceramic on them. Um, this clearly does, so different process. Let's jump into it. All right, so I just polished this rear fender to my, to my uh, right here and I want you guys to understand something. So this car has ceramic on it, so ceramic is hard to remove. So we have to choose a polish that is abrasive enough to react with the, uh, not react, but to cut into that ceramic coating to remove the swirl marks. But to my best ability, I'm not trying to remove all of that ceramic coating. Now certain areas of the car, like the, like the lower part of the car, closer to the wheel here, has more swirl marks than the top part, um, you know, like on the, like on the, uh, on the top part over here. So I don't need to polish those areas the same way. They need to be polished different ways. One uh, needs to be polished potentially with a different polish because it needs to be more abrasive or one needs to be polished uh, for a longer period of time. Now I just polished that whole fender and basically found like the code or like the paint code for what I needed to do to make it perfect. And I found out that doing the side, I had, I had to polish the side for X amount of time with uh, CarPro Reflect on a certain speed on the polisher with a certain pad, and I worked up to that. So I started with a uh, short amount of time, about 20 seconds I polished it, and then I checked it with a light, and it wasn't good enough. Then I did it for about another 30 seconds, then I checked it with a light, and it still wasn't good enough. Then I did it for about 20 or 30 seconds longer, and I checked it with a light, and then it was about right. So then I moved over about a foot from that. I polished it for like a, a minute and 20 seconds and it was perfect. So I was like, okay, we got it. Like I understand how to do this section. That does not mean I know how to do the entire car though because the front has PPF, which is in good shape and I barely need to touch. And the top half of that car, that top half of that fender is in uh, pretty good shape and has light swirl marks. So I don't need to do it that much because if I do it for a minute and 20 seconds with that combo, I'll get the same result as I did on the side, but I'll remove more coating. I don't wanna remove that coating. I wanna leave as much intact as possible, even though I'm putting my coating over top of it. So the top half I only had to do for about 30 seconds on the same combination of speed, pad, and polish. Um, that's why this stuff gets tricky and that's why you come to a guy like me. A lot of people are gonna go over this car and they're gonna one size fits all the entire thing with the same process when every fender might need three different processes, not to mention every panel or you know panels with PPF on it. So every part of this car is getting a different uh, style of polishing to fix it. The end result will be the entire car will be perfect and matching, but um, you know we didn't necessarily do the same process to get it there. 
Uh, that's called bespoke detailing. Okay, that, that's why I say that we do bespoke detailing. Every detail is custom tailored to the car, and this detail is being custom tailored to this car. Alrighty, car's all done. Uh, this is literally the craziest car I've ever been around. I think it's the closest thing to uh, like a Koenigsegg style level of insane uh, in terms of just the way it looks and the way you can kind of like quote unquote interact with it. Uh, so let me give you a tour of the entire car is to the best of my ability because there's a lot to show you. Starting on the back of the car when everything is opened up, you can see a lot of cool detail which we'll get to in a second in regards to the actual engine bay. Uh, but when the engine bay stuff is open, you can actually see the luggage area. So this is normally closed. It's like this little carbon fiber enclosure. But when you open it, there are uh, luggage pieces in there that are matching luggage to the car. It matches the leather seats. And this is the way Keith Urban designed everything. Uh, so this is his kind of color scheme that you see here. Uh, I think Hamilton Collection might actually be changing some of these leather elements in the future, which will be cool. And we'll update you guys on, on what they do. Uh, but there's also luggage behind the seats that, again, match the overall aesthetics of the car. And uh, it's super cool how they used all this space because all this is very well used. It's not like they wasted any space in the car. They really made really good use of all that space. And this stuff is covered up when everything is, you know, closed. And you'd, you'd never know that any of that was in there. You can also see there's a suitcase, uh, a suit bag behind the seat to put your suit in, which is super cool. Very classy. Uh, and then you can see the straps open up, but there's actually that red lever which really keeps it shut. The, the, le the leather is kind of just a cool touch. Uh, but yeah, when the back is open, um, unbelievable. I mean, the detail in the back, everything is made to be beautiful. All these pieces, there's lots of Pagani logos on things and stamped on stuff. And Hiroshio Pagani even signed the, the car, which is super cool. And, uh, you know, the exhaust, holy cow. I mean, it's one of the coolest looking exhausts I think I've ever seen on, on a car. And uh, all the little things you can see in this shot, if you pause it and just kind of look at it like a photo, you'll see unbelievable detail in the engine bay. Um, again, the front straps here open up and uh, those are just superficial. You can see that red latch is what really holds it. And when you open it up, the front is just as impressive as the back was. Um, you can see the things like in the front of the car there, the little gold parts that help hold the front hood up. <clears throat> unbelievable like he didn't have to make that that way but he wanted even things that people would never usually see they all had to be beautiful they all had to be able to be removed from the car and you'd look at it and go man that's really cool you know you don't say that about like the control arm on a porsche you just don't it's just not important it's very functional where this is functional but it's also art and uh, as you can see this is 77 of 100 which is pretty interesting because uh many people would think that this is you know a cool car but maybe not the most rare of all the cars we've done but this is is in fact the most rare car that we have ever done. Uh, I'll put the stats up on the screen, but the Chiron, the P1, the Senna, this is more rare uh, from a number standpoint. There are fewer of these in the world. And then once again, as you can see, guys, the inside of the car, totally incredible. Everything, you know, no, no, no attention to detail was missed here. It's, it's unbelievable. All the bolts on the inside of the car are laser etched with Pagani's name on them. Uh, the shift linkage is, you know, this incredible exposed piece of, you know, engineering. Uh, all the carbon fiber work on the steering column, the machine pedals that you saw out of aluminum. All this stuff is incredible looking and the seat is uh, that dial on the seat is how you raise and lower the seat and then when you pull the car outside it gets even better because then you can see all this incredible carbon fiber work all that V weave carbon fiber in the center how it all matches perfectly uh, the the car is like a blue color and you can actually see some of that carbon fiber and the sparkle of like the metallic flake in that uh, when it's in the sun which is really really cool and the black parts of the carbon fiber actually have like blue metallic flake in them as well. Um, you know, these are some things that if you saw this car just in a dark room, you would really, you would never know about those things. You'd have to see it really in the sun or under some kind of bright spotlight. Um, but yeah, guys, that kind of wraps up the, the tour. This is just a really unique car. And uh, it's, it's, the kind of, uh, it's the kind of detail that kind of makes your head explode when you're done with it because you see these cars on, uh, on, on the internet and you see pictures of them and videos like, like this one almost like uh, on YouTube, but it doesn't even come close to doing it justice. When you, when you see this car in person, it's like really, really impressive when you start to spend, especially I'm, I'm very fortunate. I got to spend, I think, five days with this car between all the detailing and the film work and stuff that we did. Uh, the stuff that you start to see is like, unbelievable like i didn't realize that all those bolts had pagani's name on them until the last day the car was here because it's like an information overload of how much detail is in the car 
uh, and when it, it kind of keeps surprising you as you keep looking at it. And uh, you know, the other cars I've worked on that are that are very cool, none none of them did that. You know, I didn't work on the Chiron, and on the fifth day, I realized something new about it. Too. That's Isn't pretty that cool. crazy? It's, it's very uh, cool. Distracting, but I don't, I don't, in a good way. Yeah. So Tommy's definitely not giving it all it's got. You can tell the car's way faster than that. But once again, we're on uh, P zeros. It's quite cold outside. I think it's about 45, which was like a gift from God in the middle of December to take this car for a drive. But again, we don't uh, we don't need any headlines. You, you can you can imagine the headlines. Uh, you <laughs> it would know. be great content. Yeah. It would be like it would be something like uh, Steve Hamilton's posse crashes. <laughs> Uh, Keith Urban's previous, you know, 77 of 100 we yeah. got in uh, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Once again, the cars have been shipped. Yeah, I'll do one more little rip too, so you guys can hear it. A little pop on that one. I saw him a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> Those Mexico police will get you. Yeah, you, you were, no, Canada, remember? Oh, Canada, I'm sorry. It's cold. That was last video. Yeah. It's cold, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get the story straight. Yeah. So, this is a really interesting car and a really inter interesting detail for me because, you know, I did the Chiron, I did the P1, and then recently I did the Senna, which was a, a, an awesome car to do because I'm such a huge Ayrton Senna fan. Um, so when the Wyra came, I was like, yeah, cool, a Wyra, like, that's really awesome. Like, any, anyone would have that reaction. Um, but I wasn't, like, super enthusiastic about it. Like, it wasn't something wild or crazy to me. For some reason, I just didn't think it was, like, the coolest car in the world. Um, and I, I don't know why that is. I, I think I had a similar reaction when the 992 Porsche came out, and now I'm warming up to it. Um, but that's a different story. So, the uh, once I started working on this car, and I really started to spend some time with it, I spend a lot of my time like an inch away from the car, so I'm really, it's your next right. Yeah. So I'm really engaged in looking at all the lines and looking at the paintwork, looking at the carbon fiber work. And when you spend like five days doing that to a car, you really start to appreciate it. You really start to see the detailed work in the car. And Audio. There we go. That was, that was a good one. That was all the way just, down for, for a minute. Oh, okay. Just a normal drive in the Wyra. <laughs> so, I don't know where I was. That was too much fun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're, so, you're an inch away from the car. Yeah. So, um, I think the gist of it was the, the car wasn't very impressive to me in the beginning. But after spending so much time with it, it's it's really a, a remarkable, remarkable car. It's always been regarded as, before even seeing it on the internet, it's a, it's a piece of art. It's it's like the Picasso of, of cars, or like it's like looking, you know, like when you, if you put this car in a museum, people would look at this car in awe, like someone would walk into the Sistine Chapel and look at it, look at that. It's the it's the exact same thing. It's automotive art. Um, Hiroshio Pagani said when he made this car that every piece of anything on the car, every part of the car had to be a piece of art if you removed it. So a control arm, uh, a, you know, the bolts have Pagani written on it and laser etching. Like everything can be removed and could be art on your mantle in your house or in a museum. Um, and you hear that and you're like, oh, that's cool. And I think you dismiss it a little bit. And then you see the car in person and you're like, holy shit, like this is not a joke, like everything is is so intricate and so amazing and you just start to have in my case you start to have a new appreciation for it and this is not my favorite car of all the cars i've done on but my original opinion maybe of it being like a six and a half is now like an eight and a half or a nine um where i think the senna still is maybe a 10 maybe because i'm a fanboy of of Ayrton son of the driver but um yeah i mean my, my overall takeaway at the end of this was just like i'm i'm really impressed i'm really wowed um 
it's it's a, an amazing car from from an artwork uh, standpoint. And I was talking to my uh, my neighbor the other day, who's a big car guy, and we were kind of comparing cars. And we came up with, I think for the most part, I came up with, you know, uh, a Bugatti is like an engineering marvel. It just it shouldn't be able to do what it does, but it does because it's been engineered to do so. Uh, a McLaren is like a, an aerodynamic marvel. It's it's been like a Senna or a P1. It's been designed in a wind tunnel to do what it does because they intentionally made it go fast by saying we need air to go here and do that. This car is neither of those, even though it's kind of still both of those. But this car was designed to look good. It was designed, you know, the control arms could have been left normal, but they anodized them in gold because they had to be beautiful. The mirrors could have been normal mirrors, but they designed them to look like eyeballs, like, so it was like an eye, like, so it would be cool. All the screws works, like, all the, all the bolts inside the car are just designed to be amazing looking. All the stitching, I've never seen stitching so even. It's like, they did this three times because two times it was not perfect all the way through on the stitching. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just, it's just ridiculous. This car was designed to be beautiful and, and they accomplished that goal. Just like that, this one's over guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel here. We have so many more cool videos coming out and I have another hypercar lined up to uh, be coming to our shop soon and we will be filming a whole video on that as well. So uh, like I said, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Also like and comment if you have any questions for me about <clears throat> hypercar detailing or anything uh, car related, just comment below and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video real soon. And I will leave you with this funny little outtake uh, where the camera was rolling and I didn't even realize it, but uh, I'll put this in here right in the end so you guys can get a laugh. Broke his neck, he's yeah. looking back. People just moved into the neighborhood. They're like, holy sh**. I know. Who the f is this guy? We're in the wrong neighborhood, honey. We don't have that wire money yet. <laughs>